Okay, my next guest, uh, he is, um, he works at the Dayton Quest Center. He is a manager and chief instructor. And this guy's got to be pretty good, too. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. Make you welcome for the first time, everybody, Shane Stevens. Right after. You know this guy. You know that guy. Absolutely. So, Shane. Yes. You are manager in chief. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? You love your job. I know you do. Absolutely. Yep. Every I can see a bonding a friendship when you two walked in together. It's there. It's there. A mutual respect. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't be uh, in Dayton, Ohio uh, if it wasn't for two people. One, my wife, and two, uh, <laughs> Mr. Hayes. Uh, quite the journey. But um, I read one of Mr. Hayes' books when I was a young boy, one of the 19 books that he's, he's put out, and uh, was just so moved, so moved. Uh, childhood dream of mine was to uh, be a ninja and run a ninja school and uh, yeah yeah really yeah that's exactly what I thought I uh, exactly that dynamic I remember my wife and I were having dinner one night and she asked me what my deepest darkest secret was and I said I want to be a ninja and run a ninja school and I expected that exact response what you know and she goes let's do it <laughs> oh man uh, I didn't know what to do you know I was uh, half caught and did she really say that and uh, I didn't know how to handle it so be careful what you ask for oh yeah so how did you get in touch with uh, Stephen actually uh, my wife and I decided to move to Maine and we lived in Maine for a few years and Mr. Hayes had a uh, uh, top student out there that was teaching uh, at that point in time and um, went up and started at that school in Maine at the uh, Portland Quest Center at that time and then our, all our family was from Colorado and we wanted to move a little bit closer to home so we uh, ended up moving to the source if I was going to train anywhere uh, my wife says I'll move to Dayton and oh man how cool that was to mm -hmm. actually go to the source of this individual where I had read his books and uh, ended up there and to have the support of my wife and uh, what a gift what a gift and what a journey it has been to be here now so how long have you been teaching now with uh, Ten years here, uh, going on ten years here, and then about a year in Portland, I assisted okay. with some classes. One thing that when we talked on the phone, I wanted to, I was curious about, let's say you have a six, seven-year-old student who's really good, mm -hmm. but then you get a call from the parents or the school saying that um, he's doing a lot of fighting and beating up some of the other kids, mm -hmm. which he's not supposed to do, as you have instructed and as you have mm -hmm. taught. How do you deal with these phone calls? Uh, at our school, there's a student creed that we follow and uh, surrounding yourself with really powerful, what I mean by powerful is successful, beautiful, bright, shining human beings. Mm -hmm. And to have an ideal of, hey, this is how I'd like to operate in the world. And as Anshu Hayes said, uh, here we're setting the stage for personal advancement. And so it's a vehicle for self self-development. And for these individuals, if the case was to happen like this, uh, if you look at martial arts, the actual kanji, the writing of martial arts, it means to stop violence. So all violence initially comes from inside and then manifests outside. Right. And so to sit down with this individual and have a discussion to try to find out what's really happening, what's really going on in this individual's life that's causing them uh, to act out in this way. So number one, as a guide, you're there to assist, you're there to help. And, uh, for their a, guidance. For their guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you will make your own decisions in life. We're merely here, just as parents, we're merely here as guides to assist you and give you wisdom. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the individual has to take personal responsibility for their actions but to sit down with them as a guide and assist them in any way they possibly can to stop this internal violence from happening, mm -hmm. I believe any true teacher would do in the most beautiful way, and mm -hmm. that's getting to know this person, building a rapport with this person, not only this person, but their family, and you know, setting those ideals forth. Hey, here's some ideas to think about how a powerful person would operate, not only uh, in, at home, but at school, and in every aspect of your life, uh, how would you like to operate at the highest level? And I think everybody would say, that would be great. Mm -hmm. How many of us have ever fallen down? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so that whole dynamic, even as teachers, is to remember we're all humans. And, and uh, we're beings having a human experience is a way that I've heard it mm -hmm. uh, said. And, oh, man, how important that is to, to remind ourselves of that and to assist others in growth. And, hey, you, you've all fallen down, but let me help you back up. And uh, let's try this again. Through martial arts, um, wouldn't you say that when you're dealing with 
each student. Mm -hmm. Does this ever come into play where you would say, when we finish this course, and I hope you would expect me to be your spiritual brother in uh, martial arts? Well, I think martial arts in, in, in general, I mean, at the essence of it is the whole dynamic of, of personal development and advancement. And uh, To Shin Do, which we teach at the Dayton Quest Center, is all about, hey, we're all on this journey together. We're at different stages on our path. Mm -hmm. And to really unite as a group and assist each other in personal development mm -hmm. is really the goal. Now, in regards to spirituality, people may choose different paths, but there's a code of ethics that we have right. at our school. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when you look at these code of ethics, they tie, whether you're a Catholic or a Buddhist or a Taoist, they're all built in there. They're all for the betterment of the world. And so to look at that is we're here to assist you in any way that we can. And here's a code of ethics, regardless of religious background, to really look at the spiritual aspect of it, is we're all here to learn, advance, and grow. And that's what the mission is, is we're using martial arts as a vehicle for personal development. So if I said, if I ask you the benefits of martial arts, first would, word that comes to your mind? Peace. Peace. Oh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That's good. Peace. To... Uh, so really, I think we're all looking for a centeredness, for a purpose in right. life. And if I'm living purposefully, uh, purposefully, excuse me, uh, now there's a sense of peace. There's mm -hmm. a sense of uh, oneness within our sense of knowing that, no, I'm, I'm doing what needs to be done. And uh, just the presence of those individuals in your life that you have, uh, whoa, how moving that is to yeah. just know, oh, nope, this is exactly what I need. This person's living so authentically. Oh. We're just using this as a vehicle. Well, you know you've heard, uh, until you have created a peaceful life yourself, you can't have a life with a, a mate, a wife, because you haven't created your own life yet, and you're trying to create another one. You have to have the peace in, within yourself to have a life with another person. Yeah, and I think that's the journey. I mean, all of us right. um, go through that constant uh, reevaluation, and we're all trying to grow and better ourselves and become, mm -hmm. become stronger human beings, and we're all searching for that inner peace. Mm -hmm. Well, you really summed that up good. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Thanks for coming, young hey, fellow. My pleasure. Thank Don't you so much for the opportunity.